Hello, welcome to Bits and Booze. My name is Scott Chacon, I'll be your host. I am the CEO of Git Butler. I was the co-founder of GitHub and I happen to be a certified wine expert. So in this series, we're gonna try to shake things up a little bit. We'll be drinking some wine, we'll be talking about wine and we'll be learning about Git internals. So Caleb will be joining me, a nice young man who also happens to be working at Git Butler. I'll be teaching him, I'll be teaching you how to inspect Git objects, how to use Git cat file, how to use, how to see what Git is doing under the hood. So let's get started. Hello everybody, welcome to the, well, I guess first episode, I suppose, yep. of the new Bits and Booze format. We will be drinking wine yep. and we will be learning Git. I have with me here, my good friend and fellow butler, yes. Caleb. Thank you. So everybody welcome Caleb. What we've chosen here today is a beautiful Sancerre. Do you know anything about Sancerre? No. Nothing at all. It's made from grapes. It's made from a grape called Sauvignon Blanc. Have you ever heard of Sauvignon Blanc? Yes. So the thing that's really annoying about French wines is French wine. It's made by French uh, people. You can always tell it's a French wine because yeah. it says Appellation de Origine Contrôlée. What is I that? Think that's, what I think that's that how they pronounce it. It's like the sort of county that they make oh. the wine in. Now what we don't have is a wine key. What we're going to do is drink this like cavemen that's and we're going to go straight through the cap. I'm a professional yeah. at this. Yeah, you, you can your tell. certifications, don't you? Yeah, you can tell because of my technique, right? Yeah. Um, okay, let's go ahead and try this and you tell me what you think and then we'll start talking about Git. Sure. What, what do you know about what we're doing today, by the way? Uh, so I think we're going to look at some cats, maybe some dogs. We are, then... we are. This is the pet, pet centric Git technology episode. I'll put it here for the nice, yeah. uh, the nice so shot. Give it, give it a, a we are, swirl. Let's, uh, let's oh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Git. Cheers to Git. To Git. Yeah. What we're going to do is go through a Git repository and we're going to see how is it storing its data yeah. in the background. Let's start with, with the branches, right? So yes. how do you know where a branch is? Do you remember? So branches, I can run the git branch command and it tells me some of the entries that are in my git refs folder. Well, let's run it. Sure. So git branch. All right, so we have three branches here. Do you know how it knows that you're on main rather than the other ones? Uh, yes, in my .git folder, I believe there's a file which contains the reference name of the branch that I'm on. In what file? Uh, I believe it's the head file. Let's take a look. So ls.git slash head in capitals. Well, that's just going to show the oh, same right? path again. Kip, come on. Cat. We need the animals. We knew this is a cat episode. I know. All right, so let's, there let's we look at it. OK, so it's a reference. Ref's head's main. Where do we find that file? Let's uh, walk through the tree. Let's get through all the objects that right. we're looking at here. So if I want to find that file, I yep. can do cat.git uh, refs uh, heads and then main. And that's going to be the reference to the commit at the top of that branch. So the thing about Git is that it's sort of this key value store. Yeah. And all of the keys are SHAs that are, that are sort of hashing the contents that it's storing. Um, commits are objects, blobs are objects, you know, file yeah. contents are objects, trees are objects. So we're going to go through and we're going to look at all of them and get an idea. So the yeah. way that we will do that is a command called, it's a plumbing command. It's sort right. of like the lower level Git stuff. Plunger ready. Again, cats. Cats. This is Git cat file. Okay. And I'm going to have you do it wrong first. So okay. do git cat file and then this, this SHA here. So do git cat file. Yep. And I'm, I'm going to copy the string because yep. it's too long to type. Yep. I'm going to paste it in. And it's going to explode. Boom. It's going to explode immediately. I have a couple of things here that are telling me it's wrong. I've never understood why git decided to do it this way. Because you, you would think yeah. by default it should do something, right? Yeah. So what you can do is you can do two different things. You can, you can say git cat file and then yep. as it says here in the, the help the type. So you can do, we know it's a commit. Yeah. We're pretty sure it's a commit. We think so. Because the branch yeah. is, is pointing at it. Uh, but you can also say dash P, and yeah. then it'll pretty print whatever it is, and you give yeah. it any object. So I don't know why that's not the default. I kind of feel like it should be. But let's let's take a look at it, yeah. right? So let's run so git cat file dash P. Git cat file dash P, and then my commit shell. Yeah. And, and we have this this really pretty amount of information. And this is yeah. when you run, so let's let's run git log, just so we can see the difference. So git log? So, yeah, git log. And it gives you really the same information. Git log gives it yeah. to you a little bit prettier. Um, so it looks at whatever head's pointing at right now, which is the main branch that points at a commit. Yeah. We're looking at the contents of that commit. But here, if you run git cat file, we see all the raw data, yeah, right? Got, so there's a lot of interesting things. This stuff up here, right? Right. So the first thing is the tree. So yeah. let's use git cat file to look at that. Right? Okay. So the tree also interesting, like it always has to be the first entry in this if you're ever sort of writing sort of fake commits or something. Yeah. So, um, so let's look at everything. A commit always has to have a tree. Yep. So in this case, it's very simple. It's one file. Like yep. doing ls, we can see that that's what's in our working directory as well. Oh, no, it's not. Oh. Okay. We have something different. 
Yeah. Okay. So okay. we have an untracked file. Perfect. An untracked file. Perfect. The other thing yeah. we can do is you can see here is you see an author and a committer, right? Yep. And My. the difference between that is authors whenever you originally wrote it, yep. a committer is if you like rebase it or cherry pick it or something, right. it'll it'll update that information, but it'll keep yep. the author the, the same way. And then the other thing in here is you're signing your commits. Yes, I'm very fancy. You are very fancy. You're fi signing them with SSH too, yes. which is, that's a little bit new. Um, well, I'm, a, I'm a young person. I'm do, I do modern uh, things. I'm not, what the kids not do a boomer like you. So let's look at the tree. Uh, okay. So um, the other way that you can look at a tree uh, is git ls tree. So this okay. is the second second command that so we'll run here. Git ls tree and yep. which and shell then, would you like me to use? Uh, whatever that the one the b4 no wait. Yes. b8 f7 yeah that one. Okay. That looks the same. So it does. It does. Um, but and you can't really see this here because you don't have yep. subdirectories. If you do dash -r, it'll recursively show everything. Right. Which looking at one object won't. Yeah. Cuz every entry will kind of Link to subtrees or subdirectories or, or other trees, right? Which is kind of a nice thing about Git, actually. Yeah. If you have a, a directory of contents and you recursively copy them into another directory that is named different but has all right. the same contents, um, Git's not going to store any extra data. Yeah. Right. It just reuses the same subtree. So point to a previous tree. Exactly. Let's let's continue to look at this. Let's look at yeah. the contents of that file, right? So uh, this, this, in this, this tree, we have file. we have what four things here. We have a mode. Which is the first thing there, 10064. Yep. Uh, we have the type. So, the type of entry, it can be a tree, it can be a blob, yep. generally. Uh, it can also be a commit if you're using submodules, uh, but it's, it's relatively oh, okay. uncommon to, to see submodules, but it, you yep. can have a commit object there as well. Okay. Uh, and then you have the, the SHA of whatever that content is. Yep. And then the file name, right? Wonderful. So, let's, let's do something. Let's copy foo let's, into foo2. So, let's move foo into foo. No, no, copy. We want two copy. files that are the same. Sorry. You move foo, foo to foo. foo and then commit that. Uh, get commit that and go straight to the editor. It's no dash m for you. No. I always do dash m. I never no, go to the editor. It's um, not cool. It's not cool, man. All right. So now let's look at yeah. this tree. Right? Okay. So you can do the same thing. Actually, let's do something slightly different. Do git cat file dash p. Cat file dash p. We're going to get ready to look at an object. Yep. And then do main. Main. Or head, head, either way. Main, yeah. Uh, and then do a little carrot. A little carrot. And then do a squiggly bracket. Squiggly? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. How do you do like a squiggly bracket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, yeah. And then do tree. Tree. So this is, gonna, going to... this is a short way of, uh, instead of walking through those objects, yeah. to just say, figure out what the tree is that, of see. the commit that main points to, and then do it as though uh, as though we were trying to cat file that, that thing. So let's look at what like the tree accessing is like. the property of the commit. Yeah, I mean, actually, the, the what, what it actually does, if we want to take a little sidebar, yeah. is, uh, do you know rev parse? Have you ever run rev parse? No. So if you say git rev parse, so get, do git rev dash parse. Git rev dash parse? No, with a V. Ah, oh, sorry. Rev parse. Revision parse. parse. Yeah. And then main uh, carrot tree. Main carrot tree. Yeah. So what it's going to do is it's oh, going to okay. figure out what you're talking about. Right. So what git will do is it'll run rev parse on any anything that it thinks is a rev type thing. Yeah. Um, it'll get a shot back and then it'll run it as though you had, you had actually typed that in. Yeah. Um, but if we look at the actual tree that we have, yeah. um, you'll see that foo and foo2 are yeah. the same SHA, right? Right. So it's not, it's not, when you actually store this, it's only storing that contents of that file once because they're right. identical. The same and thing. it just has this key value store um, and, and throws that in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look at one of those objects. Um, uh, do you remember how to do it? Uh, so we want to take a look at this one here. Yeah. So get here, I'll give you a little refill. P. That sounds good. How do you, do you, do you like this uh, style of wine, by the way? I do, yeah. yeah. This is the contents of the file, right? We have three yeah. lines of foo. If you, if you cat foo, yeah. the, the foo file, cat or foo2, foo. either of them, this is, yeah. it's going to be the same thing, right? So yep. one's coming out of the Git database and the, other is on, the other is on disk right now. Yeah. Let's actually look at this object. So yeah. where it stores the object in Git, it's a, yeah. one of two different places. Uh, you can have loose objects and packed objects, but right. ju let's just, simp for simplification, We'll look at the loose object. So if you yeah. go in dot git, you're, uh, so CD all the git stuff is git. in a, a dot git directory. Yeah. Uh, and you go into the objects file yeah. so for the object subdirectory. Objects folder. All these these key value objects, they're all stored in here. 
right? So let's take a look at what's here. What it does is yeah. it's going to, for sort of legacy file system reasons, I actually don't even know if this is a big thing with file systems. These, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure you can just have millions of files in one directory. Yeah. Um, but in the olden days, when, yeah. when old people like me were writing systems like this, yeah. uh, we had to deal with sort of inode limitations and things like exactly. that. So what they would do is they'd cut off the first two characters of the SHA, uh, and then they they put the object inside there. So yeah. and it should be a reasonable distribution, right? Yeah, it's 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 pretty good, right? Yeah. You won't have too many objects in any any one directory. Um, so let's I forget actually what the shot uh, number was. B four. So it's going to be under B four. B four DF. LSB four. Yeah. Okay. There's only one object in there. Some of these, yep. you know, if you could have a whole bunch of them. But let let's look at what this this file looks like. So if we cat the file, what we're going to see is a bunch of Absolutely nothing, apparently. How, how big is the file? Is it empty? No, it's just very small. OK, yeah. um, so it's okay. probably just showing characters that it can't show. I see. All right, do a hex dump on it. OK. See what the file looks like. Okay. Oh, so it has some bytes. Got some stuff there. It has some bytes in there. Yeah. Um, so the way that Git stores this is it takes the contents of the file. So in this case, it was foo 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 with yeah. like three new lines or something. Um, it appends a header to it that says what the type of the file is, and yeah. it has a size of, the, right. of what the content is. And I think the reason that they do that is so it's harder to get shot collisions that are, that are nefarious, right? right. Um, but we can actually look at what this is if we unzip it. So it's, they, okay. they do that, and then they gzip it. So yeah. this is a zipped file. Um, so it's, it's, no matter what, if you actually look at the file, it's going to be gobbledygook. It's good. compressed, right? Um, but we can un uncompress it. I made you install a program that yeah. you Maybe thought malware. it could be malware. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm not entirely sure. It's called uh, pig z. Pig uh, z. But it has a deflate function. So if you do uh -oh. dash d, dash d, and then standard in, like a pipe, pipe, pipe. This thing. Yep. No, no, not a pipe. Sorry. What's this thing? That's a, uh, alligators. Alligators. Uh, eating, alligator alligators the eating the other way. Yeah. Hungry, hungry alligator. No, no, that's that's out. We want to oh. come in. There we go. <laughs> oh my days! Yeah, yeah. The alligator wants to eat the file, so now let's, let's put the file in there. DF whatever. Okay, there so now we, we actually see what the contents of the file. Yes. Are, right? And the contents of the file are the type, so it's a blob. Yep. Uh, the size is twelve bytes, yep. and then you have your twelve bytes. We've got my content. content. So if you actually wanted to, you know, fake or like write your own Git objects, you could yep. do this, right? Like you could write these bytes out and yep. gzip them, uh, and and take whatever the SHA of the pre-gzipped content was um, and, and just write it out into a file there, right? Yeah. But, and we could do that. I think that's going to be a little bit boring. There's actually a command in Git to help you do this. OK. Um, so if you go back out to, your, to the directory where you had a bunch of stuff, yep. and you look at your files, you can run a thing called git hash object. So hash git hash dash object. Dash object. Yeah. And then give it one of these files. Okay, let's or give it. Actually, the... you might need to pipe it in. Now I'm kind of curious. Well, let's pipe it in there. Yeah. So pipe it the foo object. Yeah. Nope. Uh, nope. Don't don't do that. Just uh, just give it the foo. Just give it the foo, and there we go. That matches okay. up with. Does that match? Our other hash. Yes. So so let's modify the file. And I'll show you how to actually write an object in right. if you want to do. So edit the foo file. Yeah. Let's add in some more lines. Yep. It's wonderful. This is a pretty code. nice program here. It's called Vim. I'm not yeah. sure if you've heard about it, but I it's a, not. I it is, is the best editor. It's like Ver Visual Studio Code, but uh, dumber. So you know Emacs. <laughs> oh, it's I Emacs, do. but better. Uh, Richard Stallman's a good friend of mine. Let's go ahead and make an object out of this. So sure. if you run git git hash object foo right now, it's yep. going to give you. A, it should give you a different SHA. Right. There right. we go. Because it's different. It's yes. different content. But. That object does not exist in your database, right? So if you do right. git cat file dash p that sha, it, yeah. it should not give you anything. Unless we were incredibly unlucky and got a collision. Yeah, there we go. True. Um, but if you want to actually write it in, you can do hash object dash w, and then it'll so, take something and write it in. So right. there's, there's actually kind of an interesting, it's not common to do this type of thing. Okay. Uh, but now if you cat file that, yeah. that particular sha, it's in your object database, right? So now you can, you can update your index with it, or write out trees with it, or write yeah. commits that, that you know, reference those trees, yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, so cat file dash p, it's a, it's a really nice way of, of sort of inspecting objects. Yeah. You can also do some other stuff with it. Like if you do cat file dash t, uh, it'll give you the type of that object. So dash t, yeah. and I pass it this. Yeah. You can also do go. partial. Actually, 
Like if you do cat file dash t c39, actually that's probably enough. Nine? Yeah, let's see how. F oh. Oh. Oh, maybe maybe cat file you doesn't run it through rev parse. Nope. Oh yeah. No. Okay. Apparently got another nine. Out. Need to have at least four maybe. Um, or cat file dash s will show you the size of the object, so it'll take out oh, that okay. header. And it's, yeah, you know, 27 bytes, right? Yeah. So it give, it just parses that that header part out. But anyways, git cat file and git ls tree. If you want to go through and find out everything that git is storing in yeah. your database and kind of get an idea of how it's referencing stuff and how it's storing trees and and you know in order to push them, uh, it's a really it's a really fun yeah. fun tool. Cheers! Thank you for joining me for this uh, cat episode of Bits and Booze, and I uh, hope to see everybody in the next episode. Yeah. It's been a pleasure being here. Cheers. I'm uncultured. Yeah. I'm like milk that's been yet turned into yogurt. <laughs>